Welcome to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Keenan Lake is the author of the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, published by Worldcom, a social worker and activist. You can like this show's fan page at www.facebook.com slash the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Feel free to post any comments, questions, or requests for his book on the fan page. Now let's go into the studio with your host, Mr. Keenan Lake, and co-host, Marcus Select. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us again for the Keenan Lake Show live and on demand. We have Keenan Lake in the studio as well as all of you that have joined us live and on demand. Thank you so very much. Keenan, how are you doing on today? Coach, I'm doing wonderful today. It's a beautiful day here in Ashland, North Carolina. We got up to the mid to high 60s today. The sun is shining. It is a beautiful day, and I am doing well. That's good. That's well, good. Are you guys happy that all is Hey, I hear that it might return. So you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock on wood or cross fingers. It's still winter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I think we, we, I'm done with winter, man. I, at least I'm hoping. But I'm thinking that uh, winter's over, man. I, you know, we've had a, we've had a pretty good, aggressive winter this winter. You know, we've had some mild ones over the last couple of years, but we had a really good solid winter. So now I'm ready for the springtime and to get a little warmer weather here. Yes, sir. And we are excited about all of those who have been tuning in to the Keenan Lake Show. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well as Facebook. Keenan, before you get a topic on today, talk about where they can follow us and connect. Uh, they can always follow me uh, and, and the Keenan Lake Show on Facebook at uh, the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. Uh, Keenan Lake is my regular name. That's one of my Facebooks. And also, my daddy told me that on Facebook. On Twitter, at the KL Show. And then, uh, Instagram, uh, Keenan Lake Radio. Finally, the website is www.mydaddytalkingback.com. Uh, when you go to the website, you'll find the website. And it's so interesting that it has, uh, it'll give you all the information that you need to know about the program. Uh, and also information about the radio show as well. So, your yeah, coach, uh, today and you know I had a really interesting week with my program but the, the, today's topic is, is focused on uh, gangs and uh, upcoming rival gangs or so-called gangs in, in general uh, in your in your area or in your community so coach you know what I wanted to talk about today um, on the show was basically and I want to give a little example you know I was really you know, I deal with kids, I work with kids, you know, see kids all the time, but I, I was really kind of caught off guard and found myself in a situation, Coach, where I was kind of um, unprepared for it and, and didn't know anything about it. And what that is, Coach, is this. When you when you work with kids, and, and primarily here in, in Asheville, North Carolina, so let me just say this. Asheville is not a, a major uh, metropolitan city. It's not Atlanta. It's not New York. You know, it's not, it's not even Charlotte. Um, you know, it's a smaller city, and when you have smaller cities, you know, the gangs, the gangs, at least in my opinion, have always been kind of a joke. It's like, you know, you, you have uh, those gangs that try to mimic the other gangs they, they read about or they see on TV about the, in the larger cities, but uh, it's always like it's not as serious or it's not nearly um, the same amount of emphasis on the gang that it is in larger cities. But this week I learned a lesson, Coach, and um the lesson that I learned was that, you know, this was a thing. It was a couple of young men who were uh, had got, who got in a fight at school, of course, and it was gang-related. And um, we're talking to a, a caseworker who had this kid. They said that one of the kids had come uh, to their office a week ago and stated that he did not want to be in the gang anymore, stated that he, you know, he wanted to do away with that. He wanted to get his life together. He didn't want to live that type of life, and, you know, he really wanted to straighten up. Well, a week after that, he gets in a fight in school. Or it's a big fight at school with the rival gang. And he goes back to his caseworker. And the caseworker said, well, I thought a week ago, you know, you, you, you gave us your flag. You said you didn't want to do this. You know, what's going on? So he said, it's not that easy. You know, the kid said, it's not that easy. He said, you know, of course, I, you know, I don't want to live this life again. <clears throat> I don't want to be in this, in this type of atmosphere or be involved with the gang, but I can't just quit. 
So the kid then tells the worker that what happens if he decides to quit this game? He said, first of all, not only will I still get jumped or beat, you know, or, or beat up by the rival gang, he said, but I will um, get jumped and beat up by my, the own members of my own gang. Um, <clears throat> and then he started talking about, you know, the fact that some of these guys carry guns and they'll run up in his house, and, you know, this and the third. So when talking with a, I was talking to someone who, who was really knowledgeable about gangs and stuff like that, and what they told me was this. They said the best case scenario for these young men is if they wanted to get out of a gang, so yeah, they wouldn't get jumped. Mm -hmm. They would get jumped, they wouldn't get beat up, they would, you know. He said that's probably the best thing to happen to them. He said, because these gangs take this stuff so serious, and the, and the mind frame that they have is death before dishonor. So if you're going to leave a gang, that's, called, that's dishonor. So, you know, he said, so yeah, he said, that if it's a real live gang, a real, you know, gang that these kids are in, then them getting jumped is just a, just a, a portion of it, which would actually be one of the best things. But this is what I had to say, Coach. When you're dealing with kids who are in a game, you know, most of these kids live in the inner city projects, you know, they live in uh, public housing or communities, and it's like they they have, you know, say, for example, you have 30, 40 kids in a game. Well, you know, and you're living all in the same area, you're going to see these kids on a regular basis. So let me use myself as an example, Coach. If I'm in a gang and I'm in your gang, I'm in, I'm in you know, I'm in the SIBN radio gang, okay? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. SIBN just became a gang officially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. but, um, so if I'm in your gang and I want to get out, and I live in a community where, you know, 20 to 30 kids are in the same gang, and they see me every day, and I'm trying to get out of this gang, they're going to they're gonna beat me up. Mm -hmm. And it just really put an emphasis on how hard this is. You know, we tell these kids, well, just quit. You know, don't do this. You know, if, if it's you know if it's if it's something that you want to do, you tell them you don't want to do it, and that's it. And we think that's the end of it. But the the situation that I found myself in um, this week was they can't just quit mm -hmm. because these kids go to the same schools, they live in the same communities, and they are subjected to being harmed, hurt, or mm -hmm. worse. Mm -hmm. If they decide to get out of this situation, so coach, you know, what do we do? You know, that's that's the question that I'm left with. How can we help these young people to who really want to change their lives and do better? You know, and and, and I'll bring something back here in a minute. But how, how do we do, coach? What are you, what are your suggestions on this, coach? And what are your your thoughts? And actually, uh, information and expertise, because I'm sure you experienced this in your day. Well, I mean, the bottom line, first of all, for all of our listeners and those parents out there of children who may or not be accountable. Uh, at the time that the parent is looking for the child, wondering where the child is, let's first go over what what gangs may be available in their area. Bloods, of course, the Crips, MS-13, Latin Kings, Vice Lords, 18th Street, uh, Serenos. I mean, you don't even want to get me started on this. And these gangs are more prevalent, as you were saying earlier, in smaller suburban cities as well as urban metroplexes, if you will. And so par parents and listeners out there need to be kind of like aware of children that disappear for periods of time. Uh, my son, my oldest son uh, did it uh, at night when everybody would go to bed. Uh, he would uh, climb out of the window uh, of the house and uh, go and meet, with, meet up with the gang. And I didn't know anything about it until it was a little bit too late. Uh, who, who does that? Climb out of their window one and two in the morning. Uh, to go meet with the gang and then come back through the window, you know what I'm saying, and go back to bed and act like nothing ever happened, uh, you know. So it can get the it can get to the best of us. So I think the first the first level of defense is arming yourself with information uh, about gangs in general, and then second of all, we need to arm ourselves with the why question: Why are kids involved in gangs? Generally, in my view, to sum it all up. Uh, we know about the peer pressure issue. We know about, uh, you know, the, the, the desire to belong. But more often than not, some adult that the child is in care of is not paying attention. You got to pay attention to kids. You can't raise kids and not be paying attention. And too many times more than not, we're caught off guard. Just like I was caught off guard. I was paying attention, but I heard noises at night, but I didn't attribute it to my son actually getting up and getting going out of the window. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of an extreme but if it can get the Coach, best of us, you know what I'm saying? All right, Coach, I want to um, actually a piggyback and actually highlight what you just said. And I think you're exactly right, Coach. You know, paying attention to our youth. 
because, you know, when you look back, a lot of these young men, uh, and actually, you know, even women, but a lot of the young folks, that that's, that's exactly right. You can contribute it to the lack of, um, the lack of um, being paid attention to, you know, supervision. And being able to freelance and do this and do that, you know, when you and then and the thing is this too, coach. And I, this is what really bothered me this week when I heard this because actually um, about a month ago, a little over a month ago, you know, I had a young man in my program, and the young man in my program, he, he you know, he came to me. And he said, "Listen," he said, "I need," um, you know, and he's actually been dealing with that kind of thing, you know, gang stuff and trying to get out and stuff like that. But he said. I need to know, I need, he first said, can I talk to you for a second, Mr. Keenan? So I said, yeah, you, no problem, you can talk to me, what's going on? He said, do you mind, he said, can I actually live with you? You know, he said, can I live with you? He said, because you know my situation, you know, you know what's going on. He said, and you know, and his exact words were, if I stay here, in my current situation, I'm not going to make it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, if, you know, and at the time, at that time a month ago, I didn't realize that, you know, and I knew his situation, but I said, well, you know, Right now, I'm not in a position mm-hmm. for you to, uh, you know, stay with me and, uh, you know, allow, you know, someone else to move in the house with me. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we'll see what we can do to help you out in other ways. So with that, you know, it was almost that was a cry for help. Of course. We had, we had, several, we had several discussions at that point in time. But up until last week, I did not know how serious it was. And then I found out then, like. No wonder this kid said I wouldn't make it because even if he does want to leave his situation that he's in, he probably can't. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, he probably he probably wants to. You know, he's he's, he's voiced that to me several times. Mm-hmm. But knowing that, okay, if I do this, if I do this, okay, um, they're gonna you know jump on me, beat me up, or worse mm-hmm. by the people who I so call, I now call my friends. You know, these are people who I call my friends and. Mm-hmm. People who I run with every day, people who are, I'm associated with every day. But if I try to leave this particular group that I'm in, I'm going to have, I'm going to pay consequences for it. Not to mention the rival folks that still live in my community or, or know me to be associated with this, you know. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, it, you look at it this way. And before we take our break, you look at it this way. There are so many obstacles that these youth have to deal with. And I mean, systematic obstacles that we've talked on this show. Um, talked about on the show a number of times. You know, you have the the privatizing of jails, coach. And let me just say this real quick while I'm even mentioning that. There's a, there's a there was an article that came out last week too that I read about Nevada state prisons talking about inmates now paying for their medical coverage while they're in jail and their food. So they're trying to get they're trying to get it passed. And if you're in in jail in Nevada mm-hmm. and you're, you're you're an inmate, then you have to pay for your medical your medical care. Mm-hmm. And you have to pay for all the food that you eat in there. So we know about the traps. We know about the we know about the, the hurdles. We know about the, the system, so to speak, and what's what's going on. Because when you look at it this way, I mean, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like a lost cause. Well, I mean, that's what the Kenan Lake Show has been about. We've been about sounding, sounding the alarm, blowing the bugle, that life is not as you see it. That's what this show has been about. The, the, the book, My Daddy Taught Me That, is a effort by you and in your uh, grassroots efforts there in Asheville to return to a set of principles and values that awaken folks to, to know their own personal power at home. Let me reemphasize at home. Uh, just as a side note, uh, Clara was explaining to me all the different games that parents play to get more money by claiming other people's kids the, the tax game, you know, that goes on in the hood, if you will. So, I mean, you know, that's what the Keenan Lake show has been about. But back to your original question about what do we do first? We got to arm ourselves with the information that this can happen to me and this can happen in my neighborhood, number one. And then number two, we have to be willing to accept that it, it could possibly be our kids, however involved we already may be or however lacking our involvement may be uh, our kids may be involved but you have to give the kids credit because your story the lead in for your story started out like this kids came to me wanting to get out they realized they made a mistake they realized that the the initiations that these gangs want to be involved in 
the price to pay for these initiations are a bit high, for, even for a guilty conscience, <laughs> let alone the criminal punishment that may be uh, levied against one for for some of the initiation activity. But uh, you know, I, kudos to those kids. Let's give a shout out to the to the kids who are awakening even before some parents awake to the fact that, look, I need to change something, but I don't know how to change this because I may suffer consequences as a result of my desire to change. And so, you know, it's, there's no easy cookie cut answer to these, these hard questions, but I will say this, if you're listening to this program, uh, one thing we could do is pray. Uh, the, we, 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 we as an African American community seem seemingly we're, 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 we're robust, robustly religious, but we are very, very poor in our day to day community to community relationships, to be frank about it. Um, if we ain't collecting something from the government, we in line to get something from the government, but we need to have a, a more power centered governing amongst ourselves, uh, within our community. Let me go ahead on and bring, uh, our guest in and um, uh, stand by for one second. All right, you're on the Keenan. You're on the Keenan Lakeshore. Are you there, Keenan? You still there? I'm still there. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, they'll call back. But anyway, I mean, so so there's no there's no easy answers. But as I said, kudos to those kids, man, who who come to you, who trust you. Uh, unfortunately, you know, your program may have to grow to to where you have. Uh, some kind of uh, stand by for one second. Let me see if I can merge this. Uh, yes, you're on the Keenan Lake show. Uh, stand by for one second. Um, okay. Keenan, they may have to, uh, you, your program may have to upgrade to a residential program at some point because, as you said, this is only getting worse. And kids who really do realize that they've made a mistake, they don't have a residential place to turn to. Because if they go right. back home, as you said, it is going to be the same. Let's st extend a welcome to our guest, Keenan. Go ahead and introduce your guest. Well, this is this is uh, uh, you know, first of all, Tony, how you doing? Thanks for calling into the show. I'm good, and you appreciate you for having me. Oh yeah. So this is Tony, Coach. You know, and Tony, tell him. I'm a, do you want me to? Do you want me to tell everybody your legal name, Tony? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter either way. It doesn't matter either way because I know you go by something else. So. I don't want. Yeah. I don't want you to. I don't, I don't want you. You know. But anyway, Tony's a. He's a part of the program, Coach. In fact, give you a heads up about Tony. Tony uh, started coming to the program a little over a month and a half ago, mm -hmm. and I uh, fell in love with the program, and uh, has been one of the biggest advocates of my daddy taught me that for about the last month and a half or so now, and so he's a he's a has a wealth of knowledge and, and has really really uh, taken onus as far as helping out with the youth, and he's just been one of the biggest supports that my daddy taught me that has had as far as being. You know, Coach, you know, I told you, I, want, I like to use the phrase, uh, iron chop is iron, and being able to have uh, more men involvement. So he's been one of the first and few who is kind of stepping up and taking uh, that on his shoulder. So I really mm -hmm. appreciate him for what he's done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'll let Tony, Tony, you want to give a quick a little bit about your background real quick? I'll let you do that. Okay, um, well, first I would like to uh, appreciate you for having me on the show. I definitely appreciate uh, my daddy's talk to that. You know, I definitely see the importance of it. Um, me, myself, I'm originally from uh, Washington, D.C. Um, I actually come from a uh, hard background. Uh, well, good family life, uh, but decided to take the route towards, you know, just being in the streets, you know, hooping and hollering and what have you. Um, I, I, I actually am from uh, 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 a street background, meaning I, I was into selling drugs, uh, being in gangs, uh, actually in a gang, uh, just pretty much hooping and hollering. I, I'm, I'm gonna say hooping and hollering because you know if you if you are part of that life, then you know what that life consists of. Um, it, it consists of pretty much uh, money, drugs, uh, etc., weapons, etc. Um, Basically, uh, I was, I'm, I actually was the general of a, uh, of a gang, uh, over Goose, um, in a metropolitan area, and, um, actually I've been blessed, you know, from, from that time I found the Lord, and I think that that's the center of not only everything, but the center of my life, and I try to make it the center of my life, you know. I am still a sinner, as we all are, but, you know, it's a matter of putting one foot in front of the other, and, 
know, making sure that you do not consistently go back into the same lifestyle. My whole uh, objective now in life is to prevent others from going down the same path that I lived down. I basically feel as though I've, per- I've encouraged or, or brought a lot of people within this lifestyle that has been basically jeopardizing their futures, their lives, etc. And now I've come to the point where I'm wholeheartedly 150% just willing to dive in and, and prevent people from living this lifestyle. It's pretty much a reckless lifestyle, and it's basically a trap in my eyes. It's a trap, you know. Um, we've come too far as a nation, as mankind, to allow ourselves, and especially our youth, to go down the same path that we went down in and go down a path that might be jeopardizing, you know, their futures, their goals, and pretty much everything that they aspire to do, you know. Uh, I feel like... A lot of people go into the lifestyle because of lack of love or wanting to fit in or even it could be a a materialistic thing that might have someone fall into the lifestyle. Me personally, you know, I pretty much went towards the coming from a single family home, uh, not having a father figure other than my grandfather, you know, but that wouldn't carry much weight at that time with the immature mind that I was carrying at the time. You know, I was thinking about right here, right now, and making it happen. So the only thing that was on my mind was money, to be told, women, uh, materialistic things, cars, houses, things amongst these lines, you know. Uh, I, I, I must admit I was very successful at what I did, and a lot of people don't understand how can I go from the man that I once was and, and come to the point that I am now, but now I see a lot more things that bring riches and a lot more things to to really appreciate that that means much more. There's a lot more things in life worth a lot more than money, cars, clothes, and materialistic things like family, you know. Family is definitely one of the most important things to me under God, you know, just my spiritual beliefs. Um, there's a appreciation for what it is we have, and honestly, life, you know, life is definitely a big thing, you know, to even be able to enjoy life is, is one precious, precious gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Tony, let me get around right there, because we're, we're about to take a break real quick, but when we come back, I want to, a couple of questions I want to ask you, so our viewers and listen, our listeners will be able to understand more about what we're talking about today. Okay. All right, we're going to go to a small commercial break. You're listening to The Sounds, live and on demand, the Keenan Lake Show, right here on SIBN Radio. Stand by. We trust that you are enjoying the show. Stay right there. We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to The Sounds of Your Lifestyle. Improvement Station. Hi, it's Jamaica Chapel, College Park, Georgia, in the house. You're listening to SID and Radio Hi, this is Ted Bones calling from Richmond, Virginia, and you're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, SIBN Radio. Y'all turn it up now. Hi, this is VJ Washington calling from Atlanta, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station. S-I-D-N Radio. So turn it up. Hi, my name is Sonia Claiborne from East St. Louis, Illinois, by way of Corruptsville, Missouri. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station. S-I-D-N Radio. Turn it up. What's good? It's your boy Joe coming from Snellville, Georgia. You're listening to the Lifestyle Improvement Station, S-I-D-N Radio. Y'all turn it up. You're listening to the sounds of your lifestyle improvement station, changing the way we live. SIBNFM, powered by Summit USA TV. Hey, we're back here at the SIBN number one show, as Keenan would like to say. <laughs> the Keenan Lake Show, we're talking about gangs increasing in our communities. What can we do about those kids who want to get out? Keenan?
addicted to the sounds of your lifestyle improvement station. What? Changing the way we live. S-I-B-N-F-M. You're listening to the sound of your lifestyle improvement station. Hi, Jamaica Chapel, College Park, Georgia, in the house. You're listening to S-I-B-N Radio. Hi, this is Paul from Richmond, Virginia, and you're listening to the lifestyle. So, so, well, we want to just go ahead and pose the same question you put on the table, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, reiterating that same point that we were discussing before you came on, and that is, what do we say, do? or need to change in order to prepare ourselves for those kids who are in gangs, realize they have made a mistake, want to turn their lives around. Cause let's face it. A lot of our kids really want to turn their lives around. People don't get it twisted. A hardcore shell does not necessarily mean behind it. There's not a soft heart, but unfortunately all of the different components of violence and other things, pressure uh, that cause our kids to have to conform to something that will mean something. Uh, to give them some kind of uh, credibility or, or, or some kind of dignity even t in some cases. So the question on the table, Tony, is what do we do or share or tell or how can we as adults and parents uh, better prepare ourselves for those kids who really want to change the dynamic of the direction that they're going in? Just as it is with all things, all things evolve. Mm. Um, listen to it, and we decided to go into our own way of doing things. You know, it's it's merely a sense of of compassion, love, you know, being there listening, you know, being interacting in your child's life, you know, understanding where they're coming from without any judgment whatsoever, you know. Um, just pretty much what I what I, I actually did a presentation or a speech on um on my daddy taught me that because this is my this is my heart now. And um pretty much how to answer that is, you know, Bring your child up in the way they should go, and when they get old, they shall never part from it, you know. Giving down what was given to you, it's a serious neglect of of that nowadays, you know, and it seems like it began when I was a child, you know. There was a neglect of showing a child which way to go or showing a child what was right or showing a child the what what a man truly is and actually it's not even just about a man because it's not it's not just men now, you know, it's, it's women. You know, it's, it's women as well, our, our queens and our kings, you know, and, I, and as I said before, and I'll continue to state, you know, it's it's not that of a, a racial thing, it's, it's that of a mankind thing, a humanity thing, you know. Uh, we It's not just blacks that are falling suspect or falling victim to these lifestyles or to these mentalities, you know. It's all ethnic backgrounds, you know. Um, really just, just being there, showing that you care, you know, actually showing them right from wrong. And what I mean from right from wrong, I don't mean touching that stove, knowing that that stove is hot, you know. I don't mean that. I mean letting them know, even though sometimes it could backfire, but everything we must have, we must believe in fate. Everything is within the Lord's will, you know. Anything and everything is within the Lord's will. But 
in order to know where this life comes from or what comes with this life or what could come out of this life or how you could perceive this life, you must know about it. You know, people get this misconception of, well, children get this misconception of what gangs and violence and all these things really are. But in all actuality, they don't get the, the truth of the matter. You know, a great example for that is, you know, everyone is, especially if they're into music, you know, and, and if they listen to music, you, you hear a lot of whooping and hollering about, you know, guns and what they do and how you could do this, that, and the third, but they don't think about what happens after the fact, the dreams that haunt you, the, 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 the acts that you committed which haunt you, the, 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 I hate this word, but I have to say it, the karma that comes with it, you know, the karma, because mm -hmm. that definitely has to serve its, its place. It definitely has to serve its course before anything is up. So if I were to say anything, I would have to say, you know, train your, bring your child up in a way that they should go so that they will never part from it. You know, pass the peace, so to speak, you know, uh, pay it forward, you know, give what was given unto you. Yeah, listen, wow. I want to also say that we had some, some technical difficulties. So uh, on the on the line, everybody, for those of you who are le chatting and letting us know that you couldn't hear uh, Tony. Tony is an ex-gang member uh, coming from Washington, D.C., Metroplex there in Washington. Uh, and he is a part of helping. Uh, my, my daddy taught me that. Uh, kids, along with Keenan Lake, and sharing his expertise on how to continue to develop uh, amid all the pressures that they face uh, in their communities and particularly in their in their family uh, dwellings. Uh, so we apologize to anyone who who may not have heard his introduction. Uh, but Keenan, we'll just go we just we just go a little bit longer because we we seem to had had some technical difficulties. But Tony, uh, I, I want to go back to some some things that you talked about. Uh, how do we and I'm, I know this sounds redundant, but how do we show that we care? We we are living and I want to say the preface, everything that I'm going to ask by saying this. If you remember, Tony and Keenan, uh, when we were coming up, particularly Keenan and myself, uh, most of the folks that were our parents were older folks, more seasoned. Don't mean they were perfect by no means, but let's just logistically they were older. They were they were past, you know, the, the, the teen or young adult years well into their 30s or 40s or whatever case may be. Uh, and, and, and it seemed like the, the whole of society was that way. And somewhere along the lines, uh, somewhere maybe around early 80s or so, uh, late 70s, early 80s, we start having a, a whole slew of youth parents, if you will. And, and so when you have, you know, a few decades, I want to say 30 years plus of, of, of nothing but youth parents that are young. They're just all young. They, 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 they're, these are their kids that we're talking about, not them themselves, but their kids. Uh, so perhaps they've done somewhat you know, well for themselves, gone on to a decent job or perhaps, you know, learn how to, you know, matriculate them with themselves through the system. Uh, but it's their kids. Uh, because they had them when they were young, they did the best that they could. So, Tony, talk a little bit about this whole this whole youth parenting thing. I I, I still can't wrap my, my 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 mind around this whole generation of youth parents. Well, before Tony says something, Coach, let me let me let me interject real quick, Coach, because it's funny that you said that because we were talking about this uh, last week a little bit, and it was something. You know, um, and actually, Tony, you know, Tony, a young buck, Coach, he ain't, he's only 29 years old. He's a young man. He ain't old at all. But he got an but, old uh, soul. He got an old soul. Let's say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let, let me just interject real quick, Coach. Um, it's funny you said that because um, I was talking to a, um, a person who's uh, one of the community leaders here in Nashville, um, and he was telling me, you know, he was raised up, uh, you know, underneath, uh, like, underneath my dad. I mean, he was telling us that. You know, they they dropped the ball. And he was saying, you know, the same things that your father did for us and the same things that that generation did for us, we didn't do for y'all. He said we were more focused on, we are more career-oriented, you know, and they, we were more about getting, our, getting our, our, our money in order, you know, whereas my father and his generation, that, that generation, they used to do clinics and, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, community events and a lot of this and, you know, and, and, and t you know, teaching with the, uh, with the newer uh, communities I'm talking about now, the generation I'm talking about now, they they were so called, like I said, do, starting their careers, starting to get out of you know, leave actually altogether, leave this community altogether, and venture out. So I think it was a disconnect there 
for one reason. But then, Coach, she has to be right. Um, even now, even now, you know, when I'm when I'm in certain places or I'm in, you know, I'm doing my job, I'm doing my work. I look around, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of young folks. Like, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of young parents here. And you know, with that being said, you know, it's like it's not that they're bad parents, but at the same time, you you made a valid point too. It's not that. You know, we, we, when I grew up, I had, uh, you know, a 70-something-year-old grandma, you know, and a 70-something-year-old grandfather who were were really, really in tune with, with us as young folks and was in tune with a part of our, our upbringing. Now, when you, you know, so it's like you're dealing with, a, 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 like you said, a more seasoned, a more seasoned dynamic. You know, you, you got, you got, a, you got your parents, you got your parents who are, you know, in, in their 40s, in your 50s. You got your grandparents who are in their 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. And then you got a whole community who are more apt. Because, you know, this is the thing, Coach, and you can relate to this. When, when we were coming home, you get in trouble on one end of the neighborhood. You might get two or three, you might get it two or three times before you got home. And that's real talk. Like, yeah. like, you, like, like on the way to the house, you know, people who know, like, oh, you did what? Come here. Come here, let me talk to you. What you just do? Mm-hmm. You know, you throw a rock in a car and broke out a window? No, uh-uh. We don't mm-hmm. do that. So you're getting yelled at, chatting, maybe even spanked them. And then you get home to your parents, and it's like, man, now i got to get it from them too. Exactly. So the the, the dynamics have changed, you know. And that's, and, and, but, and that's it, but that's the point that I want Tony to speak to because Atlanta is dealing, we, Atlanta's dealing with about 65 different gangs. I mean, young niggas, uh, YT Young Team, Rolling uh, 60s Crip. You got Gangster Disciples. Fair Street Crip. You got uh, TTG uh, Train, I believe. You got GMPL. You've oh man, you've got uh, Young Mob. You've got Haiti Gang Youth Mob. You've got Bluff Gang. You got uh, Bandit Gang. I mean, they've got about seventy gang. You got uh, LOE. You know, you got G. Uh, uh, I think it's called Six MY. Uh, uh, low money y- youngsters. You know what I'm saying? Thirty deep. You got click trio. I mean, y'all, y'all want me to go? Gangster disciples. You got young and busting. North side savages. I mean, man, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what has happened, Tony. You can speak to a young uh, YPN. You know what I'm saying? WBC white boy click. I mean, it's just these gangs, uh, in my estimation, Tony, have replaced families. Let's just call it what it is. The, the, the yeah. kids, the kids got to belong. The kids got to get respect from somewhere. The kids got to get uh, a moral food uh, and, 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 and psychological and social support from somewhere. And they're getting it from these gangs. And as Keenan said, we as adults, particularly the generation that raised me, uh, dropped the ball because they were more black and white. Uh, they didn't see any gray. And then the gen- then my generation tried to warn the generation that raised me, listen, there's some gray areas. How do we deal with this? And and even myself, with my son being in a gang, though he was only in it temporarily before he moved back with his mom, I didn't know what the heck was going on because he snuck out in the middle of the night while everybody was asleep. So this doesn't escape any of us. But I want Tony to speak to the fact that I count probably about 70-something gangs right in the Atlanta area both white and black because the family unit has been fractured for at least three decades now. Well, first I'm going to say, uh, one thing about this life, you know, is it, it never leaves you, you know, it, I'm not going to sit here and shun it as though it does not instill some things, some, some vital, vital lessons to you, you know, um, the way things were again, the way things were when I was come when I was coming up was is way different than the the way things are now. Uh, we cared about ethics, we cared about morals, we cared about what you did with yourself, but we also, you know, would not abandon you if you decided to take the wrong route. We will want to keep you under our wing so that you'll do it correctly. You know, things now have definitely flopped you know um the conception of things is totally different from what they are now as far as from the the children having children's standpoint you know i don't quite understand that myself you know uh me myself i haven't had the pleasure of of uh experiencing that uh because i was too engulfed in the life and it's a blessing and a curse Mm -hmm. um 
what was I'm sorry. What was the question again? Well, I mean, you know, you you just pretty much answered the question. I mean, we were we were just saying that gangs, you know, we can look at the bad components of this whole scenario, and there are many many bad components. And as you just said. It's off the chain today, but let's not negate the fact that children have to belong somewhere. Let's not negate yeah. the fact that they have to spend their time somewhere. They, ha they they have to have street credibility. I mean, one way or the other, whether they have a father there. And, and, and I mean, in, in Keenan's case, my daddy had my back. You know what I mean? But I mean, kids got to have credibility. Got to have a rep in the street. And so what parents and, and, and listeners yeah. in the audience need to understand is that while there's a lot of things bad that's wrong with gangs, and I think you answered the question perfectly, it, the initial reason why gangs appeared is because the family broke down. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's the truth. Yeah, I'm not in that, that generation where uh, my mother stayed at work to provide for home. You know, she that's pretty much where she spent all her time at. And me being the only boy, I I needed, or I felt like I needed to learn what a man really was. And I went out, and when I went out, they took me under their wing, you know, for whatever reasons. You know, in this generation, uh, a brother of mine, there's, there's quite a few. We it's a it's a it's a thick net network that I that not only I but I'm I'm connected with. And a brother of mine, Stephen, he uh, actually said something that was total truth, you know, there are more, there are more, well, actually, I believe his statement was there are more people, more black males within the judicial system, within the correctional system than there, than there was in slavery. Um, and that's pretty much how it is. These generations have pretty continuously getting locked up. The first rule of the game when I was coming up was don't get caught. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the first rule of the game, and it seems like that is lost now. You know, it's it's the cool thing to get locked up. Mm -hmm. It's the cool thing to go to prison. It's the cool thing to be out here doing it backwards, you know. Mm -hmm. But in all actuality, you know, we're sending off a message that is sending our youth down the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You know, I've chosen to go for youth because... Most people, especially around my age or older, you know, we're setting our ways and us changing is very hard. But it's still time. It's, it, we could still actually, they, honestly, yes, there's still time, but there is no more time for our youth. Because as Kenneth right. says all the time, by the time they're in elementary school, they already know by their test scores how many beds to hold for our kids, you know. Mm -hmm. I believe that a lot of people, well, a lot of my generation, even some younger than me and up, need to stop being scared and, and, and step out into these communities and step up and become the men that you are supposed to be and the women that you are supposed to be and go back for these kids. There's no reason to be scared. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the circumstance, that's what faith is for. That's what grace is for. You know, mm -hmm. this is what we're doing. We're leaving our kids out here amongst these wolves and telling them to survive, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is pretty yeah. much contributing to the death and the mis misguidance and, and our kids being lost, you know. And I say our kids because I hold this to the heart. This, these, are, these are my little brothers. These are my little sisters. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be kings and queens, but instead they're treated like peasants and they're living life like peasants. When in all actuality, we are conquerors. We should be out here living to the potential that we should live to. And in order for us to live to, or them to live to the potential that they should live to, we must have guidance. We must have these these young men and these young women guided in the way that they should go. And it, it falls upon us as adults. You know, I don't really consider my, I'm, I'm still a Toys R Us kid, but, you know, I, I, the fact of the matter remains is that I am an adult even though I don't want to grow up. But I, I refuse to uh, sit back and watch these 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 princes and these 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 princesses go down this route that's just leading to hells, jails, institutions, and death. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty much all we're left with, or all they're left with is hells, jails, institutions, and death. And these societies are making it seem like that is the way to go. You know, to go out in the gun blaze is not 
is not honorable. You do not get any stripes for that. You know, you get nothing. You leave no legacy. You leave nothing behind. Now, you may leave some seeds to go down the same route that you've been going down, but you leave in pretty much nothing but uh, a figure. You know, we must break this, this, this vicious and crazy and this mad cycle that, that society has been building for so many years. We must break it. Eventually, it's going to have to come to an end. Eventually, someone has to step up. Eventually, someone has to put their hand in that hot oil. Eventually, someone has to be like Shamrock, Meshach, and Abednego and step into those flames, you know, and know that you're not there alone. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to go to a small commercial break, man. This is Kenan Lake Show live and on demand, man. Great conversation. Let's continue when we come back. This is the Kenan Lake Show live and on demand. Stand by. Responsible, accountable. Who taught you that? My daddy taught me that. That's right, the new book, all the way from Asheville, North Carolina, representing the legacy of Benny Lake, is Keenan Lake. The author of My Daddy Taught Me That, the book and the program for young men in Asheville, North Carolina, and throughout the region. Tune in. Tune in to the program, the project, and the book at MyDaddyTaughtMeThat.com. For more information, email Lake at mydaddytalkmethat.com or call 828-582-2261 that's 828-582-2261 mydaddytalkmethat.com now is the time now is the to time your radio show on SIBN Radio you're ready to share your You're message ready to share your with, message. The world. with the world. Then call 404 910 That's right. Call 404 5019 Producing your radio show on SIBN Radio. For more information, dial 404 910 5019. That's right. That's right. 404 910-510-5019. Now is the time. All right, we're back here at the Keenan Lake Show, live and on demand. Keenan, I'm telling you, you know, some of the practical solutions, Keenan, is what you're doing. Um, giving back, uh, what Tony is doing, giving back, reaching back. And as I think, think Tony said it best, without the judgmentalism, uh, without the uh, conditions, and simply letting a child know, because this is what impresses a child, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. When you let a child know that I'm here for you when, if you need me, and I'm going to be checking on you, I'm going to be looking in on you, and I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about whether or not you have clothes to wear, whether or not you have food to eat. You're not my child, but I'm concerned about whether or not your grades are up to par. You're not my child, but I want you to know I'm part of your community. I'm here for you. What you guys think of that? Well, Coach, you know, um, you're absolutely right. And, and a lot of times, these youth, these kids, that's all they really want. You know, we, we, we get it twisted sometimes. We think that, you know, because particularly when you're dealing with teenagers, that they don't want to listen, that they don't want to, you know, follow the rules and regulations when it's actually the opposite. A lot of these kids reach out, and they're crying out for help. They're crying out for attention. They're crying out for, you know, us adults, you know, to pay attention and, 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 and hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Um you know that's that's the that's the, the, the pretty much the, the whole nutshell and truth of it. But you know, I think Tony made some very very valid points. I think he made some valid points earlier in, in our discussion that you know, as adults, as care providers, parents, we got to be better. You know, we got to we got to be better for our youth because we're and it's a, and it's sad, coach, because it's you know it's not all bad. I don't want the world to think that the Keenan Lake Show only brings bad stuff to light or. You know, we're always talking about the bad stuff. But what we want to do is highlight and focus on some of the things that are going on so we can change. You know, and, and Tony said it best. You know, if we don't, if we don't address these issues, they'll never be, it'll, it'll never promote awareness for things to change. I wanna, and I, so that's what the Keynote Lake Show all, is all about. Go I, ahead, Coach. I want to interject something that people probably have not thought about. The angry black man begins as an angry black boy. 
The angry black man begins as an angry black boy because he only had a toy and not a man to show him the way. He only had a mother who struggled and yet felt powerless because he could not help his mother along the way. A an angry black man began as an angry black boy. And he is angry for one thing in my estimation. That is because every human being wants guidance. Every human being wants love. Every human being wants some sense of camaraderie, some sense of dignity. And when that is not offered to a child in the developmental stage, that child inherently becomes angry, angry enough to smoke dope, angry enough to fire a gun into a crowd of innocent people, angry enough to steal a car, angry enough to go and run their vehicle through a jewelry store and just grab all the jewelry that they can so that they can parade around and say, look at me now. I got something going on because inside you wouldn't understand how angry I am that I was left, that I was hungry, that my mother struggled and that I couldn't do anything about it, that my father wasn't there. So when you see an angry black man, please remember it started as an angry black boy or an angry black woman started as an angry black girl. That's true. You know, and the thing about this too, Coach, is this too. Um, you know, just because, you have to understand this too, and in our society, you know, which we've been talking about a lot, a lot of the time, our society teaches us and programs us to certain things. Like, for example, you look at actors, you look at, you look at, you look at how actors and, 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 famous people do, you know, it's not even so much about positive attention anymore. When you think about it, as long as it, 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 this is what they say, you do what you have to do to keep your name in the papers or to keep the attention going. So, and sometimes negative attention is even better than positive attention. You look at Molly Cyrus. She's gotten more attention twerking and doing all this other kind of stuff mm -hmm. than, than she ever did when she was with Disney and Nickelodeon and all other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so... You think about it from that from that standpoint and that mind frame where our society teaches us. You know, it's it's you know you you know we glorify the the Sandy Hook, the people who who do all these masks. You know, and we it's on the news for weeks on end, and, and then these people, you know, it's like really seriously. But so with that too, these kids understand. Like you know, what, if I do something that's really going to stand out, you know, or something that's going to call it get attention, mm -hmm. you know, why should I? Why should I go to school and? And do well when if I where is if I get out here with a gun and do this in the third, mm -hmm. not only will it give me the respect that I want, but people will pay attention to it. So, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, we have to get better all around, coach. You know, and our make, society has to get better. Make no mistake about it. There are some, uh, Keenan, as you well know, there are some people who have parents there that don't pay them no attention. So, you or, know, that, just or, a, that, yeah. or, or that favor them or. or or treat them when, exactly. even when wrong is being done. You know that was that was one thing that that was that was there when I was growing up. You know I never got new Jordans while I'm expelled from school, or I never got PS threes and Xboxes and this that and the third when I'm not living my life right, or I'm not going to school, or I'm not or I'm not getting the grades that I've given that I'm supposed to be getting. You know they get these praises even though these negative outcomes are still there, you know, that that needs to definitely go back to how it once was. And like Keenan said, you know, and, and actually I miss those days, you know, and I'm and I actually do that but I don't I don't whoop them now. You know, I I've had my share of whoopings, I'm not gonna lie, you know. But um, you know, I, I, I talk to these young men. I talk to the young men and the young girls, you know, especially in the Pisco View area, you know. They they run up to my they run up to my truck or my car, you know, and and come talk to me, you know, because they cannot just open up and talk to their mothers or open up and talk to their fathers, you know, and and the, and, and the majority of of these parents nowadays are, are still children themselves, you know. I'm sorry, but I have to give all honor and glory to my father because he is a je he is a jealous God, you know. Um, before we before we can be. Before we can be who we can, who we should be, we must first learn how to be a child. You know, he says that you must go go back to being an infant 
to to be raised back up, you know. Nowadays, you know, we're raised into rap music. We're raised into uh, drugs. We're raised into being fly or having money or swag, as they call it, you know. We're raised into all these things that are ungodly, you know. When I was coming up, there was a godly background. There was a godly foundation. Although it wasn't as it was when my grandparents were alive, you know, I mean, excuse me, when they were, when they were uh, raised, but there, there was still that that family or that uh, that uh, that that godly or spiritual. I say spiritual and not religious. That spiritual, you know, foundation that was that was the base of everything. But you know what I want to ask you guys before we before we close out. In a lot of cases, and as Keenan, you were saying earlier in the news with Justin Bieber, for an example. Now, this is the part that throws a lot of people for a curve. Here's a guy whose parents is managing him on site. I thought the guy was having some management outside in which he does has additional management, but this parents is right there. And, and, and they're not even, they're not even because you know what, Tony Keenan, it's money, 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 coach. Exactly. It's money, coach. Exactly. And, and money, 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 change, money changes everything. And see, this is the thing. And this is, you see, you see it every day. You see it in the lives of, like you said, Justin Bieber. But think about the young men, or even let's just say the young women, the, the, the young kids who are selling dope in the streets who come home and bring that money home, and their whole the whole lives the changes. It's like mm-hmm. the parents don't don't parent anymore. It's like well, this kid is bringing home hundreds of hundreds of dollars a week. Mm-hmm. He's a man now, mm-hmm. you know. I got to start treating him. He's fifteen years old and. Mm-hmm. He's bringing home, you know, more money than I've ever seen, you know, mm-hmm. so I got to start treating him like the man that he is, you know, so mm-hmm. it's about money mm-hmm. and it's about, it's about what Tony truly just said. It's about getting back to our morals because the bottom line, coach, and you know this, Tony, you know this as well, nothing, you know, we can do everything that we, we, we talk about doing, our hearts can be in the right place, mm-hmm. but until we get back to the foundation of Christ and, 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 up, and uprooting that implementing that in our everyday, uh, our everyday uh, talks with these kids, our everyday inter- interactions with these kids, and also just being able to instill that in these young men and young women, nothing's going to ever change. Society as a whole is always going to say money rules. Mm-hmm. You, you, you guys, need, we almost had a president who won. You know, we, uh, we almost had a new president who almost beat Obama just strictly off of money. He mm-hmm. pumped in a, a lot of money mm-hmm. and almost won an election. Mm-hmm. Money makes everything that shouldn't be be and it turns it turns a lot of things corrupt mm. but people turn a blind eye because of money mm. or the lack of money <laughs> or the lack of money because one, right. of the, one of the uh one of the biggest uh conversations on the political table now making rounds is the truth of what we have known to be truth all along and that is uh income inequality where the rules have been rigged, despite what others may deny, uh, the rules have been rigged for the top one percent and those that are oh, in yeah. that in that bracket. And so, uh, kids. One of the things that I learned also when I worked in the streets with kids is they have a high sense of intuition. They can tell when their mother is struggling, whether their mother ever cries a tear. They can tell when their father's not going to come home. They can feel the atmosphere. They they have antennas, as it were, that they can sense, but they don't know always what to do with it. They don't know what to they don't know what to, to make of all of these emotions that emerge from a conflicting uh, and an unsettling atmosphere in their homes. And so they deal with things the best that they can. And we're not making excuses for them. But what you have to understand about a child is the child is ever developing. And there's a lot of conflict already in development without all of the things we discussed today. There's there's the 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 puberty issue. There's the hormonal issue. There's the psychosocial issue. There's the educational issue. There's the nutritional issue uh, and on and on and on. There's the uh, genealogical issue. Uh, So they're they're facing with all of that and the peer pressure and the fact that daddy didn't come home and the fact that, as Tony said, mama has to work and wish mama was here to to help me with this but oh well throw it to the wind and let me go and do x y and z so until as as tony said as Kenan said until we return to the table of what family really truly is supposed to be and the only person that can help us with that is the person in our estimation that created family and that that was god 
You know, he made a, a mm -hmm. two parents and he told the two parents multiply and then have dominion. I want you to have kids, but I want you to be in charge while you're having kids. I need some help right there. And until exactly. we return to that, I mean, it's, it's chaos. So if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this show and you have questions on how you can minimize the chaos and confusion in your hood or in your in your home, we strongly suggest Tony might echo me, Keenan, I'm sure you're going to echo that you get this book. My daddy taught me that because all it's doing is re echoing a generation ago of principles and values that will help you settle personally and help you settle in your environment. That's really all it does. Keenan, am I right or wrong on that? Oh, no, you're absolutely right, Coach. You're absolutely 100% right. And they can get that book at www.mydaddytaughtmethat.com, or they can call you, Keenan. Give your phone number one more time. Yeah, you can reach me at area code 828-582-2261. That is my phone number. If anyone wants to place an order, please give me a call. Go to the website. Or if you don't feel comfortable with doing any of those, contact me on my social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, and um, or Instagram. Yes, Tony, it's been good to have you on board. we got to have you on again. As I said, in the Atlanta area, there are over 70-something gangs. And I tell you, they, they, they go from the Latin community to the white community to the black community to the Spanish community. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable how many gangs are in the Atlanta area. But kudos to all those kids who who really want to change. Uh, we don't pay enough attention to the ki good kids, the kids that really are trying to do something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, good can't get no no recognition. <laughs> You're absolutely right about that, Coach. Can I can I say something? Do you yeah. mind all right, before we, can, we close? Yes, sir. Go ahead. By no means do I want to act holier than thou, or it seems though I'm holier than thou. I'm just a man that's strong in faith, and I am a conqueror. You know, and I also want to, you know, as I said yesterday in the young men, the young men's uh, forum, you know, I just want to say to to all the individuals, to all the organizations, to everyone that's a, a extending a hand, you know, it, it's it's enough talking being going on, you know. A lot of organizations I deal with and I tell them and a lot of them don't like that I tell them, but there's enough enough talking going on. There's been talking going on for years. There's been talking going on for hours, you know. Now is the time for action. Now is the time to get out there. Now is the time to dive in and allow our footsteps to be ordered. Mm, very well said. Very well said. Man, that's a wrap right here on the Kenan Lake Show, man. Ain't nothing to add to that right there, Kenan. Nothing to add. All right, guys. I think you said it best, Coach. Hey, that's our time, man. We went over, but it's all good. When you're the owner of the network, you can do that. Keenan, <laughs> thank you so much, man. Thank you so Must much. Be nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Keenan. All right, Coach. Until the next time, folks, we really appreciate you tuning in for another episode of the Keenan Lake Show, and we'll see you again next week. All right, guys. Stand by. Thank you for joining us today for the Keenan Lake Show. We know you will be empowered as you consider the content shared by Mr. Keenan Lake, co-host Marcus Select, and our guests. For more information about Mr. Keenan Lake, please visit www.mydaddytaughtmethat and feel free to email us at lake at mydaddytaughtmethat.com. Books can be ordered from Mr. Lake by calling 828-582-2261. Until next time. You've been listening to the Keenan Lake Show on SIBN Radio. I'm Nomvula, aka Sunshine, and we here in South Africa are tuned in to SIBN Radio at www.415-96radio.com. If you would like to know more about the SIBN television and radio network, complete a contact form at the website www.415-96radio.com. Salet USA TV, reaching the world.